I'm Goddess Raven, and this is Raven Spills the Tea. Now, Angela Yee left the breakfast club for this reason. And at the end, I'll give you a little, you know, a little something extra, extra on the 48 laws of power and how Angela Yee used some of these laws to get what she wants. Let's get into this. From the outside looking in, the Breakfast Club looks like an all-star team, but even the best teams have their issues, which was evident by the way Charlemagne the God handled the Angela Yee beef with Gucci Mane. That's right. Angela, you know, she took it very hard that he decided to do this interview with Gucci Mane. And I believe that that was the catalyst to the end of the dream team. Okay, in this, you'll hear her, like, um, you, I want you to hear her thoughts and everything on this, because Gucci Man went on a, the uh, offensive against Yi and DJ Envy during his one-on-one -on -one interview with Charlemagne the God. During their conversation, Gucci addressed the rumors claiming that he was banned from the breakfast club. It came from that punk ass B, that's what he Gucci says. Gucci says in reference to Ye. Now, come on, Gucci, you can't be calling a woman a punk ass bitch. Jeez. And DJ Envy, he a pussy too. Oh, Envy a pussy man. Okay. Gucci also said he was going to slap Envy the next time they saw each other. Now, if you are 100% good friends with people, and you know that a person is beefing with that person, you don't go sit down and break bread with that person and do interviews with that person. You just don't do that. You know, it just don't look right. It don't. Uh, and, and we'll see this and be like, he must be banned, because why are you not in the, uh, <laughs> in the studio? But for the record, he's not banned. I don't know where that came from. It came from that punk ass bitch, man. And DJ Envy, he's a pussy too. And we did it too. Envy, pussy man, pussy. You scared? Wasn't even scared to come. You know he scared. What yet? I didn't know he wasn't there. So he wasn't gonna come. He wasn't gonna come because the day they did that peep squirt thing and he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. He was there. Him and uh the girl, or whatever. So he ain't had the nurse to come after he did that. The girl. Yeah, this is how he addresses <laughs> Bo DJ Envy right and angela Yee, the girl okay so i would like to i'm gonna like see if i can bring it up so y'all can see what i'm talking about okay let me just bring it up real quick yeah so y'all can see what i'm talking about the girl so the girl he had a nurse come and did it. I knew I, knew, I, was I was front front to him. I was like, hey, man, you know, you, know, you got something to say to me? I just, just want to see what he was going to say. Because he's saying, like, like, he has something to say to him. I don't know. So I'm going to give him his face to face. Because I ain't no man, I ain't no issue. But I do got an issue with him, too. I got an issue with him now. I'm stuck to him. Not saying. Just like, like he stepped to the people talking about his wife, and they came with them, he confronted them. So I'm gonna frame him about what he did. He come in the wrong shot, shit out of him. It's just like he made his first time to shot. Wow! So he said this will not be the first time that DJ Envy got slapped, indicating that Envy has been slapped before by somebody. 
okay so that little tidbit right there that little clip of that interview and the disrespect that was you know gucci man was saying about yeah Ye, you know angela Yee and dj envy like if we, me and you're supposed to be really good best friends and you know not just co-workers but best friends we are a team you are not supposed to be sitting down with the enemy letting the enemy just talk pure cash ish about me and you're not gonna like defend me you're not gonna say anything you know like um hold up you i'm sorry look you can't just sit here and just call you know my peoples of the bee you just can't call him a punk you can't just threaten you know to put hands on my co-worker and my best my friend because that's my friend you you being bad disrespectful but Charlemagne did none of the above he just sat there doing the interview like mm, okay whatever and i i take i, I know from dj envy and angela Yee's perspective Charlemagne was foul as hell for that okay and she even goes like like when this happened, she even talks about it. So let's get into that. Defend it, because I love you in real life, <laughs> off the air. Shout um, out to Quicksilver, the Quicksilver show. I'll drop the link Gucci in man, so. the mm -hmm. um, let's description start here. box. Is there any truth in anything that Gucci Man said? Uh, didn't what do you think if you know me? Uh, <laughs> I would say no. Um, but <laughs> I mean, what's the that. people that know me in real life? really would be like come on that's ridiculous and mm -hmm. you know i understand like people don't know me before the breakfast club so they don't understand i had a show where we talked really crazy all the time mm -hmm. and envy used to be like i don't know if angela could come to fm radio because her you know the way she talks is so she crazy walks. but mm -hmm. i think that like mature adults know that you can discuss sex and conversations and that doesn't mean that someone likes you you know what i mean like me and you could have a conversation like we just were yeah you know, off right, camera right, right. where we're talking about sex and things like that and you're not like yeah angela's trying to holler at me that's mm -hmm. not what that means so so know. pretty much what happened you think there was a conversation had that uh, had that gucci man took the wrong way yeah and i think he must have been thinking about it for 10 years i don't know <laughs> just to clear up anybody who was wondering because they said angeli she hasn't made a, a comment or a statement back um no she did not sleep with gucci man well yeah and even he said that that didn't right. happen right. and you know clearly like fortunately for me i do have um the full interview and i think and we were talking about this too sometimes people take like a little snippet of something yeah. or, and they can try to make it into something bigger as we saw that happen with tank as right. well mm -hmm. and so Fortunately, if I need to, I do have, I'll let you hear it. Ooh, the receipt. Mm. I'll let you hear it. 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 But I'm going to let you hear it. Okay. Um, and so one of the things stemming from this whole interview, obviously Charlamagne sat down with him. A lot of people are saying that you all, there's some like unsaid beef between you all because he did conduct the interview with Gucci. Is that true? Any truth to that? Would you do that? If it, if it was you and Quicksilver, you guys, would you do that? There would be a discussion first. Was yes. there even a discussion? Um, no, but I knew he was doing the interview. I just think that um, in general, if you work with somebody and someone's saying things like negative things, nasty, like things you can't even say on the radio right. in a really derogatory way, whether or not you work with that person, you know, talking about a woman in that way, because I have never called anybody out of their name. Yeah. I think that's the real issue. Like, you mm -hmm. can't just sit there and laugh when something like that happens. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so I would hope that even up here for you guys, yeah. If somebody was like, oh, she's a B, right, 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 she right. tried to S my, you, you know, all you of that, you would be like, yo, okay. chill. Like, that was really don't aggressive. Talk, don't I talk say. about a woman like mm -hmm. that. Right. Yeah. Even if he was talking about L'Oreal, I would hope that even though they don't work together. And the girl chimes in and says, you know, Gucci Man was talking very aggressive. And he was. He was talking very aggressive, too, about Angela Yee. And DJ Envy. He was talking about putting paws on DJ Envy. Okay? And she's basically saying, would you do that? He asked the show co-host. Okay? If it was you and Quicksilver and you guys, would you do that? I knew he was doing the interview. I just think in general, if you work with somebody and someone is saying things nasty, things you can't even say on the radio in a derogatory way i think that the real that's the real issue and you can't just sit there and flip and grin your teeth and laugh with the person you know and that's where it messed up 
Okay, and then Gucci Man putting Angelie on blast. Well, you know, people found it funny, but it was not funny. Gucci Man issue with Charlemagne's cohort st stem cohort co stems from a club court segment that took place er er like earlier before this whole they did the interviews and he came up there and all of that. So Charlemagne was wasn't there for that segment, but Ye and Envy decided to further explain a moment that took place during Gucci Man's 2016 appearance on the show. In the interview, Gucci alleges that Angela Yee made some sexual advances towards him in the past. Now, Angela immediately denied Gucci's claims and said that she didn't want to have, you know, any intimate relationships with Gucci, nor did she have his phone number during the recent club court segment. Gucci accusations were the result of him misreading some playful, you know, back and forth that took place in 2009. Boy, like, yeah, like I'm with Angela E. Something from 2009, you it's still playing on your mind in 2016. Gucci, what is up? Mm -hmm. He he got that gorilla, he got that elephant gorilla memory where you remember every damn thing. Jeez. But let's continue on. All right. I had a show where we talked real crazy. So Angela Lee explains all of that in, in that little snippet that I play. Unlike Charlemagne, DJ Envy stuck by Yee's side. Envy responded to Gucci's threats in an Instagram post that explains he refused the rapper's request to do an interview without Yee. He also said that Yee has the right to defend herself on the show because they share the platform and he won't stop her from speaking her piece. Gucci Man was never banned from the Breakfast Club. When asked, would I do an interview without ye? My reply was, I will not do anything unless you clear it with my co-workers. Recall that writing for your team where I'm from. Envy wrote, when Gucci did the, the, the post about ye, she defended herself on the Breakfast Club, and he's mad because I let her do it. I have never ran from a conversation in my life, and I don't plan to run now. And that was something that he posted on his Instagram, okay? Let me see if I can pull up that post right here. I mean, because, damn, that was a long-ass time ago when that post happened. So it might not, I might not even be able to find that damn post. Because, shoot, how many years ago was that? But y'all get the point, okay? So I'm not going to go look for the post that on Instagram with the dog and everything and him making comments and all of that stuff. You just know he that was his opinion on it, okay? So after that, you know, he, he, Angela Yee continued to speak out. You know, she continued to speak out about the situation because, of course, she felt flipping betrayed. So she was doing like different interviews with different outlets and stuff. And she was talking about her, you know, what, how she felt on this. So keeping it strictly business, Angela Yee clears the air, revealing that she and her co-host, Charlemagne the God, are not beefing. They just aren't friends. Now, where they were friends before they as a result of Charlemagne the God sitting down doing that interview it changed all things okay because Angela Yee realized that it was not teamwork make the dream work it was all business for Charlemagne where for Angela Yee and DJ Envy it was all about friendship being a team writing for each other, looking out for each other, they realized Charlemagne the God was all for self, self, self. And I ain't talking about GJ self. <laughs> okay, so Angela Yee, the host of Power 105, made clear during a recent interview with Variety that she and her co-hosts are just co-workers. Following his unsupportive action during her very public beat with Gucci Man. Yay. Ye, host and creator of the of her podcast, Lip Service, 
has become one of the media's leading ladies known for dishing out heart-to-heart -heart advice on The Breakfast Club and asking tough, sometimes uncomfortable questions on lip service. Angela Yee is a veteran in the game, has used her platform to, to promote the advancement of female voices in the industry and confront seemingly taboo topics for women like sexuality. So it came as a surprise to many last fall, well, this is, the, you know, a couple of falls before, when the mainly unproblematic host found herself at the heart of a Gucci man versus the Breakfast Club beef, which appeared to leave her and fellow co-host Charlemagne the God on the outs. So, yeah, she did an interview and she's talking about it and she's saying, you know, She's basically letting them know that they are not cool. They are not. They don't have that um, thing, that camaraderie that they had before. They don't. So Angela Lee, who has addressed the topic before, says this wasn't the first time her co-host didn't have her back. There's been a lot of experiences. And she says it's sick and it sucks because sometimes you feel so numb. You used to to get um i used to get upset over things and feel so much after a while shit keeps happening you're just numb to it now so apparently he has done this a, a lot to her and uh, previously times she has forgiven him but with this gucci man situation there was no forgiveness in this shit just went too far when asked directly how her and Charlemagne's relationship was doing lately, she responded, We're always been we're we've always been the same. We work together. It is what it is. Angela said when asked about the status of her friendship with Charlemagne, like he said, we're co-workers. A lot of people have jobs where they don't necessarily love the people they work with. It's just a part of life. That's not the person you hang out with in real life. Later in the interview, she revealed that it is often hard to be the only woman on the show, and she feels at times her voice is overlooked. So these are showing you the cracks of why, you know, Angela Yee left that breakfast club. I was taught in radio, if someone is talking, then you don't talk over them. Sometimes it's hard to even speak, and that is true because Charlemagne will just, y'all, if y'all a breakfast um, club fan, Y'all know Charlemagne will just like she'll be talking. She'll doing rumor have it, ooh, rumor have it. You know the rumor report. He'll just interrupt it, and like like interrupt her as she's doing the report. Or sometimes even DJ like like why are we talking about this? Which is kind of like a dismissive attitude towards what she's doing. So they would constantly interrupt her, constantly be like not all the time, but be dismissive of what she was doing. So sometimes being the only woman on the show, I have to always try to cut in because I'm also the person who's doing the research, watching the shows, reading the books. I'm always trying to get the um, validity and points across at ye. Oh, Jesus. Can you imagine that? Ultimately, the the radio host says she has found her voice outside of the show. And this interview was done in Jan on January 9th, 2020. So from this point, you could tell that at this point, she's already looking beyond this show. She's looking for other things to do where her voice will always be heard. She'll never be cut off. She'll never have to fight to get her, her thoughts out. So she's already looking outside of a show because of, you know, especially after what happened with Gucci, Gucci Man and Charlemagne situation. So this was a few months after into the new year because what happened with her in the Gucci Man situation was 2019. Now, by 2020, she's starting to look at other avenues and she's starting to build those other avenues. And you see her doing more and more like interviews doing different stuff and you had the entanglement you remember that august alcina which she broke okay yeah so she's already looking 
for ultimately, like she says, the host is the, the, the magazine is saying ultimately the host said she has found her voice outside of the show. So she is looking beyond the show. That means she's not, you know, she's not completely loyal to it anymore because she has found her voice outside of this. And, you know, she's done interview after interview. Now, that was in January. By April of 2020, she's still mad about the situation. So even though Charlemagne's controversial interview with Gucci Man happened last year, the consequences of it are still being felt between him and his Breakfast Club co-hosts, especially with Angela Yee. This is a few months in. Now, this is four months in. The radio personality and lip service host did an interview recently with Claudia Jordan for her Fox Soul show, Out Loud, which is currently filming virtually. That is, I guess that is no more. During the conversation, which includes fellow Fox Soul personality Mike Hill and Donnie, yeah, this is the yeah, day. These people ain't there with that show anymore. She was asked about Charlemagne's decision to interview Gucci solo after the rapper accused her of be, uh, being behind his alleged banishment from the Breakfast Club and proceeded to call her and all uh, and DJ Envy names. She said she just would have never done something like that to him because some things, including getting views and a lot of attention for interviews are not as important to her as they are to him. Morally, there's a lot of things I would never do, but everybody's morals, I guess, aren't on the same level. Ooh, child, she hitting them, she, she's hitting them, sing, them zingers on his ass. When asked about whether or not the incident created tension between herself and her popular co hosts she admits things admittedly look off between them because they aren't close. I think the reason that happened was probably because we're not like friends. This was a surprise to Jordan and her co-host because one would assume that after 10 years of working together, they would have fostered a friendship. And this is what she got to say. I wouldn't call us friends. I think friends are people that you're like, oh, wow. I talk to this person outside. I hang out with them. Everybody's not your friend. Some people are people that you are acquainted with. Girl, preach on it. Some people are people you work with. True. Some people are family members. True. That doesn't necessarily mean you're friends with each other. Facts. With that in mind, them not being friends, even before the Gucci drama, the 44-year-old said she didn't find his decision to do the event interview shocking. Still, she let him know where she stood about it soon after. We had a conversation at work, and he basically said he don't think there was anything wrong with it. And I can't force anybody to be like, well, that wasn't the best idea. But if he thinks that's cool, I can't speak for him. People just have different levels of like. This is what I would and wouldn't do. And when it comes to what she would and wouldn't do, Angela Lee says that that, inter that interviewing someone who's disrespected Charlemagne and sitting back and laughing at that disrespect is something she would not take part in. Just on the record, I would never do anything like that. Even after all this, I just wouldn't do that still to this day. It's unclear if things will get better between them and if they care to work towards improvement. Something else that's unclear is whether or not the entire party will stick with the Breakfast Club past 2020. See, the writings were on the wall, my dears. When asked recently if they signed new contracts, Shellman says, uh, nah, I'm not, I'm not re up while Angela says she was sure on what the future would bring, but wanted to keep her options open. So there could be a potential that Charlemagne might not be a co-host on The Breakfast Club either. Okay? It's renegotiation time, she says in 2020. I wanted the shortest contract po possible. 
Y'all, the writing was on the wall. Why would she want the shortest contract? Okay, and that means contract was up in 2022, probably. You never know if something else happens. Who wants to be stuck if that's and that's if, if that happens? Who knows? Okay. So she was planning to be up out of that bitch anyway. Okay. That's basically what it's telling y'all. Now, this is where Charlemagne, it took Charlemagne almost the end of 2020. I guess after people really talked them about the situation to finally admit, um, yeah, um, I was wrong. So it kind of took him a while to admit it. The Gucci man and Angela Yee Foods severely fractured Charlemagne the God's friendship with his Breakfast Club co-host during a sit-down with DJ Vad earlier this month of September 18th of 2020. Sean Mayda God admitted that he finally apologized to Yee just days prior for not defending her during his interview with Gucci back in October of 2019. The nuances of it is me and Angela Yee have worked together for almost 10 years, he began. If me and Angela Yee weren't necessarily on the best of terms, I could see why she would feel I'm not her friend. I literally just apologized to Angela Yee for that. Like literally yesterday. <clears throat> Do you believe this? He he apologized to her. So it was September 18th when they did the sit down, right? So it was just like probably what September 16th, what 17th, maybe he, he apologized of 2020. The incident happened in October 2019. So it took him a year to apologize to her for what he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be feeling that shit either, okay? Honestly. Sherman believes that he shouldn't be held accountable for whatever uh, interviewee says during their conversation. Um, you're accountable because if you sit down with that person, knowing full well that person got beef with people and, the, you know, they're going to want to talk about it, you're responsible because you are allowing that person to have a platform to air his shit out. Okay, that's the way he felt because he was responding to something me and Angela did on the radio. I'm like, damn, that's effed up. But he has a right to feel that way. That's like Will Smith and Jada Pickett Smith being mad at Angela Lee because she interviewed August Alsina and August said what he said about the whole entanglement thing. I just don't think that as a personality, I should be held responsible for that. Damn, Charlemagne, you just you just don't know how to. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> Even with that said, the brash radio host realized it would have been petty to hold on to his stance and not apologize, especially with the kind of history Charlemagne has with Angela Yee working together for nearly a decade. I got genuine love for Angela because we created something historic. We built something historic. The Breakfast Club is literally going into the Radio Hall of Fame. A lot of this stems back from Yee and Gucci's viral 2016 Breakfast Club exchange, where she denies ever interviewing um, or being in romantically involved with him. Their flirty 2010 lip service would then resurface and make the rounds bringing Yee's recount of the situation into question. No, we was cool. I was not on your dick. Stop it. You didn't speak to me what hotel you was in. Never. Never. Gucci said he lost his wallet last night, so he don't have no ID. Catch your ass out right here. Now, let me, how did you end up losing your wallet? You had it in your pocket? You think somebody uh, took it? I don't know. Somebody, no, nah, nobody took it. My, too, too, many, too many people around me for somebody to take something from me. Maybe it was somebody around you. Man. Damn. Can't nobody take <laughs> shit from me. Ain't nobody never took nothing from me. I just life. took something. You didn't even feel it. 
So you can take it. Can, can, can you take it? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what they say about little girls, especially Asian ones? Fat push. <laughs> Is that what they say? Is that what they say? I was going to say deep. Um, so now, if you uh, got married, would you get a prenup? It depends on who I married. Really? You would consider not doing it? Yeah, I would consider that. What kind of woman would you want to marry? Marry. What kind of woman would I want to marry? If you were to pick all the qualities that you look for, what's important? Besides Ooh, the fat ass. Shot. Well, you can make an ass fat, no, you no, said. No, not this fat She got no fat ass. Uh, really? She just had to be a, she had to be a, let me see. You she married somebody fun. with a fat ass now, she had to be, she had to be real. She had to be spontaneous. Okay. And she can't just be on the spot, just keep me going and. She don't like no street shit. It ain't gonna go. She gotta be a. She got. I don't say she's not the opposite of me, but she gotta like this shit because this shit is what it is. She don't feel like this is what she want. It ain't gonna go. Do you ever like, well, like you found somebody yeah, with like Keisha? Like, even if they, even if they're not, you know, what I'm saying not necessarily like, you know, like me mm -hmm. or compatible to me, they like what I am. Cause I am who I am. Okay, and pretty damn cool guy at that. So you heard that little exchange between them, right? No, we was cool. I was not on your dick. Stop it. You didn't speak to me what hotel you was in. Oh! Never. 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 <laughs> he lost his wallet last night, so he don't have no ID. Catch your ass out right here. Now, let me, how did you end up losing your wallet? You had it in your pocket? You think somebody uh, took it? I don't know. So, yeah. Found Gucci. I'm following Gucci's 2019 sit down with Charlemagne, which also found him sending threats to DJ Envy. He continued to downplay anything ever happening between Gucci and herself. Whew. So let's see something right here. Damn, we got 31 minutes. What the hell? I did not expect this to be that long. I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, my goodness. It's always been nice and polite and kind to me, so I never had. I wasn't. I I I Comments was like, uh, LOL. Well, it was def it definitely was, or the that's the funny part. Oh, oh, shoot. Nice <laughs> and and kind to me. Oh, jeez. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we got that, and we lead to Angela Yee's announcement that she's leaving. The Breakfast Club. Yep, she's leaving. So we're going to get to that little bit clip right there. And we're going to be wrapping this video up because I did not know it was going to be this mother flipping long. All right. All right. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, so this is really exciting, exciting but this is something that, that I've been, been wanting to do for years now, now since way, way before the pandemic. pandemic. Um, I, I had actually sat, sat down, down with our, our big boss, Thea. Thea. And, and I was telling her, like, look, I really want to have my own show. You know, I have my podcast, lip service. And I was thinking I would be able to get something like a weekend situation, you know, one day easy to have my own show again. I did come from Sirius, where I had the morning after with Angela Yee, and then came here. And so it's always been a goal of mine to have that. And so I thought I would still be on here and then do that show as well. But, but um, years, years later, later, they approached me, approached me Thea had to sit down with me, and, and told me that they are going to give me my very own show. show. 
And so part of that is I wasn't sure what was happening when she first told me, but I am going to be leaving the Breakfast Club. You guys obviously will continue on and you know, you know, it'll, it'll be, be a different iteration, iteration of the Breakfast Club, club but, but I will have my own show up here at iHeart as well. As well. So, 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 so when you say your own show, like a, a daily, daily show. show. Yes. Like, like a, a show. daily yes. show. Yes, a nationally syndicated, 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 syndicated daily show. show. And lip service. And my podcast lip service. Would you ever do it? It's really exciting. I mean, I really honestly can't believe it. I know it took a long time to make this happen. So I want to thank everybody at iHeart. But of course, mostly I really want to thank First, First and foremost, foremost the, the listeners who are part of our Breakfast Club family, we've been doing this for 12 years now. And so this is just a tremendous opportunity. I feel extremely grateful, extremely blessed to be able to get something that, you know, is really monumental up here because, you know, as far as having a nationally syndicated show and somebody in my position, a woman, a black woman, up, up here, here. Um, I thought you were saying he was Asian in the I mean, other it's a rare, it's a rare, and it's a great opportunity, and it's not something that I take lightly. So I'm really excited. Now I'm still going to be here on the, on the Breakfast Club, Club until everything, everything gets worked out. out. I don't know where, where the show is exactly going to be aired. I know definitely New York. Okay. Okay. Um, of course, I'll be here. This is my home base, but yeah, and I'm not exactly sure when it's starting. I just know it's in the fall sometime. Well, the next couple of months. You will, you will be starting your own syndicated, syndicated show. show. Yes. With, With the things, things that you do. So you'll be doing interviews. You'll be doing, interviews, you'll be doing, you'll be doing your rooms. You'll, you'll be doing asking. You'll, 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 you'll be doing everything that you do. Content. Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll be basically, basically curating my own situation. Well, congratulations. I am extremely happy for Angie. We got from the team boss for Angie. I am extremely happy for Angie. I'm extremely happy for the culture of radio. Because y'all, y'all know behind the scenes, I'm just saying that radio is taking the personality out of radio. So we, we aren't building radio stars anymore. But now in 2022, we have a radio star, a multimedia platform star like Angela Yee. The fact that you're getting two nationally syndicated radio shows, that's a big deal. Dropping a clue bomb to Angela Yee. So the Breakfast Club is not going anywhere. Angela Yee is not going anywhere. Did you tell me this is Oh, no, I'm going somewhere. Oh, oh, she shut she shut DJ Envy quick on down on that quick talking about um he was like angel he ain't going nowhere breakfast club ain't going nowhere. she was like she, uh, hold up envy <laughs> set the tape oh i am going somewhere i'm out <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. said i'm out okay all right and last okay let's stop that right here so the final thing is the 48 laws of power. Never put too much, law number two, never put too much trust in friends. Learn how to use enemies. Law three, conceal your intentions. Not everybody needs to know your plans. She moved behind the scenes. Always say less than necessary. You don't need to know. Everybody don't need to know what you're trying to do. All right. Law six. Court attention at all costs. So she was able to use the situation with Charlemagne the God as a catalyst to help her launch other brands. Law five. So much depends on reputation. So guard it with your life. She defended her reputation against Gucci Mane. She sure did. Law nine, win through your actions, never through argument. That's right, we don't argue with people. Mm-mm, no thank you. You ain't gotta argue, mm-mm. Law 22, use the surrender tactic. Transform weakness into power. That's right. Um, once she finished defending herself, she let it go. And, you know, they had a conversation and all was forgiven. And it does appear to use, use the, the, the surrender tactic. Transform weakness into power. Okay. Concentrate your forces. Law 23. You know, concentrate on what you're trying to accomplish. Law 26, keep your hands clean 
at all times she kept her hands clean you know she was very upfront with what she said in her in the interview with gucci man and everything law 27 create a cult-like following by playing on people's need to believe and that is she plays on she creates a cult following with the i am an asian black woman you know that's a minority in this field you know i have to defend my opinion you know i also like help promote you know sexuality for women and this and the other and so she playing on people's need okay that that and creating a niche and a cult for herself that now that she is moving on to other areas that following will follow her and it says the last thing is law 20 well the last two is plan all the way to the end law 29 law 35 master the art of timing so she already knew from 2020 that she wasn't trying to sign no long ass contract because she had other things that she wanted to accomplish smart girl and the last one is work on the hearts and minds of others so she did that by playing on our hearts of oh my gosh like how could you know charlemagne the god do this to her and, da, 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 and the things that she has to put up with you know doing that show da, da, da. and it made us feel sympathy for her feel bad for her so yes work on the hearts and minds of others and if we felt bad for her imagine how the staff at iheart radio and the breakfast club and all that felt for her and so when there was an opportunity to give her a, her own show hmm, things worked out for her favor so those were the laws that i see was applied to this situation and that angela ye used to get what she wants I know this was pretty long, but you know what? I hope y'all check it out. And on that note, I'm done. I gots to go. Bye, y'all.